I'd like to share a few thoughts with you on measuring spleen size in the adult. And on the left hand picture here, you can see that I've drawn the outlines of a very enlarged spleen. Now it's important to be able to say how big the spleen is as different spleen sizes may give you different differential diagnoses. And usually we would divide spleen sizes up into sizes less than four centimeters, which would us usually mean, so let's say less than four centimeters, which usually implicates mild splenic enlargement. Four to eight would be moderate, moderate, and more than eight centimeters would be considered massive splenic enlargement. But where do we get these numbers from? If we say it's less than four centimeters or four to eight, what does that actually mean? Now the measurement that we do is taken from the point where the midclavicular line transects the lower costal margin. If you see here, the lower costal margin runs more or less along that area. And the midclavicular mid line is this vertical black line that I've drawn for you there. And where these two lines transect, that is your starting point for measurement. Now, from there, you will basically measure to the furthest point away from this, um, this transection uh, that you can still feel the spleen typically it's tipped. So in this case, it will be in this area here. So if we then measure in centimeters, okay, it must be a straight line, of course, but if you take that measurement in centimeters, then that will be your spleen size. And we will usually uh, describe it as, let's say, for instance, in this case, um, I think in practice, this will be more or less 16 centimeters. That's you now just, just a guesstimate, but let's say the, we would say the spleen is palpable 16 centimeters below the left costal margin. And note that we are not measuring in a vertical direction, which is something we'll do with the liver. We are measuring from the cross sectional point here to the furthest palpable point of the spleen. Now, one of the biggest mistakes people make here is that they actually put the midclavicular line in the wrong place. And it's very important to find the correct area. Many people sometimes confuse the midclavicular line as the line that goes through the left nipple. And this is not true. The left nipple can be very mobile, can be in many different places on the chest. And it's certainly not the same thing as the midclavicular line. So to find the midclavicular line, and I'm going to take you to the drawing on the right here, you must take the midpoint between the sternoclavicular joint, which I've marked with a cross there, and the acromioclavicular joint, which I'm marking there. So the halfway mark between those two points would be the midclavicular line, and one must look very carefully to where it would cross and transect the lower left rib margin. In that way, the measurement becomes standardized and clear, and you can talk to anybody in the world, and you will be sure that you, you are talking about the same thing.